This uh, Zoo Storm was purchased from eBuyer uh, a couple of years ago now, and um, it's it, it started playing up recently with uh, data starting to become corrupted on the hard drive, Windows refusing kind of to start. Um, so just had a quick basic check on it, checked the old power supply, uh, the 3.3 volt supply was a little bit high for my liking, um, 12 volt, the 5 volt was pretty much spot on, the 5 volt uh, standby was a little bit high as well, so I just recommended changing the, the power supply because after 3 years with one of these, uh, the bog standard freebie power supplies you get with one of these, it isn't going to be the best, so uh, that's what I went ahead and did, so when I got the uh, Corsair, Corsair, Corsair uh, VS350, because this thing doesn't exactly drink a lot of uh, juice and plugged it in and suddenly nothing uh, it wouldn't uh, boot to BIOS the screen remained blank and uh, the the hard drive uh, basically went through a, a process of it sounded like it, it couldn't read anything it goes that's probably the worst impression of a hard drive you'll ever hear, but uh, that's pretty much what it was doing. Uh, which is incidentally the same noise it makes as if you completely disconnect the uh, SATA, SATA data cable from it and just have the power, and you put the power to it, that's exactly the same noise as the hard drive makes. So it kind of implied that the motherboard was no longer communicating with the hard drive at all. There was no uh, the, the power light on the front of the case, um, didn't illuminate blue, and fans powered up, but that was about it. Um, so I thought this would be a little bit strange. So kind of you know you double check all your connections. It's not rocket science, and uh, it booted up again. So I thought no more of it. Uh, installed Windows, shut it down again. Came to do a reboot. Back to exactly the same thing. So this obviously then start you start thinking about it must be the power supply. There must be an issue with that. So I started checking all the voltages on there. All the voltages seem fine. Even checked, not just using the voltage tester, but checked for the check to make sure because the voltage um, the power supply uh, testers that you get, you're not even sure when it says you've got 3.3 volts or 12 volts or whatever else. You're not even entirely sure which which wire it's actually measuring off. You know, has one of these wires on here got a dodgy connection going there, or is it a dodgy connection inside here? So went along with a multimeter, checked each one of those, did the wriggle test as well whilst I was doing it, everything was stable. Then checked all the grounds, made sure all the grounds were connected to each other. Just did a continuity test, uh, you know, wriggle test once again. Um, did the same thing with the additional uh, uh, 12 volt uh, CPU supply there, absolutely nothing wrong. Um, and plug the old power supply back in, which was a bit dodgy, uh, everything sprung back into life again. Uh, which made no sense at all. Um, now I've since tried this other power supply on other things, and it, it seems to be fine. There doesn't seem to be an issue with it. So then we're basically down to something on here. Swapped out the memory. That's absolutely fine as well. Um, the different memory modules made no change whatsoever to the behaviour of it. Um, then I suddenly came across the, the point as if it didn't boot first time. I pushed down on the board, gave it a bit of flex, held a bit of uh, tension on it, um, but it would actually boot. Okay. Um, straight into Windows. So we're obviously down to something now on the component level on here that, you know, there might be a fracture, there might be a dry joint, or it might be a, a damaged soldered joint um, and uh, so I thought first of all just go and check the CPU so I quickly just go and uh, remove the stock heatsink off there now I'll just try and get a little bit closer in on this Excuse the rubbish tripod work once again. So, 
stuff. And this is what I discovered in here. Now this was a, um, a pre, some of you probably know, Zeus Storm. They're pre-built units. Um, this one was uh, purchased through eBuyer. Um, I'm not sure if they're available through other outlets or whether this is just exclusively to eBuyer. Anyway, it's irrelevant. It's pre-built. So yeah, the CPU and the heatsink were put in prior to purchase. Um, and just remove the CPU just for a moment. What I discovered was the uh, that one of the pins. Let's pop the camera out. Uh, one of the pins had been bent upwards. Um, on the socket, and it immediately sh it immediately uh, showed up because it was reflecting light at a different angle. And the uh, lighting here is a little bit different. Just remove that out of the way for the moment. All right, All right let's refocus again. And some keen eyed people will spot now that there's one reflecting light differently to the others. Which is that culprit just there, and that was bent up and off to one side. Um, and it even shows on the. Just invert. I'm not sure this is actually going to show up. But you can see all the contact points. Let's just try it. I don't think it's going to show up. But you can see all the contact points um, where they've marked uh, on the pads on the bottom of the ECU. I probably won't be able to hold it, but you could tell on that pin that it had just been on the edge of one of these contact points. So, bent it back, and uh, it was still rather intermittent to say this. You can just about see the dots of the contact points there. But interestingly, um, I was looking for uh, even amount of contact points, and up in one area, there was hardly any indentations uh, whatsoever, and that area uh, was just in this corner. A few of these pins here had hardly made any physical mark uh, on the actual contact points on there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently lift those ones just a very very small amount. Um, off the, yeah, I'm not exactly over the moon with the uh, new type of socket design. I know it's been around for a number of years now, and I do kind of prefer the old CPUs that used to have physical legs that used to come down and then get uh, mechanically clamped with a slight sideways force against all the contacts in here. This one with a top pressure. I don't know. It may work properly. It may be just that MSI sourced, who actually manufactured this um, motherboard, sourced maybe a cheap lot of uh, sockets. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but the clamping pressure does not seem to be even. Um, so um, what I'll do is I'll lift the few offending pins up there, just a very, very, very small amount, and uh, see if it makes any difference again. Um, but to be honest with you, it's probably just worth buying a new board because these boards are just so cheap anyway. Um, but regardless, I won't be purchasing another MSI. Again, looking at the quality of uh, uh, the quality of this, I mean, I don't know who bent the pin. In fact, it shows up there beautifully now. Who ever bent that pin? I'm not entirely sure. Could be something from the factory. Could be something from the uh, um the uh, the shop where they were. Uh, put together um, before they uh, got shipped over. Who can say? But in regards to that, there's still very little contact pressure, if anything at all, amongst here. And with the temperature fluctuation, you know, the thermal cycling uh, of a CPU, with slight expansion and contraction and stuff, it's probably going to be enough just to uh, make intermittent, intermittent contact um, along there. 
which isn't good. So, anyway, so if you've got a uh, an MSI or a Zeus Storm that uh, really isn't playing ball, then uh, that might be the issue with it. Uh, anyway, I hope you found that uh, partially useful. It doesn't really solve anything, but it may just answer a few questions if anyone's had any uh, weird and wonderful issues with them. Cheers. Bye.